Hello and welcome. My name is Kate Marind. I'm a program manager at the DC Department of Small and Local Business Development. And today we are continuing our Aspire and Dream elective series for 2024. I'm incredibly excited to introduce Dr. Wariz Majid. And um, Dr. Majid, I'm gonna turn things straight over to you for your session on Blueprints for Success. All right, so first of all, thank you so much, Kate. We have been knowing each other for a while now in this space. Um, I love DSLBD, I love what DSLBD stands for. Um, but today I am just super duper excited uh, to be able to uh, have this time with you beautiful people. I'm hoping that you all will cut on your cameras. I like to see faces. Um, I was just telling Kate, like I really like to do these sessions in person um, so that uh, since we're in this virtual world, let's try to shrink the world a little bit so I can be able to see you all, interact with you all, engage with you all. Um, we only have an hour. Uh, the session that we're gonna be doing today is called Funding the Poverty Mindset. So Funding the Poverty Mindset. Um, this is a really, really exciting session that we're doing all over the world. So I'm just so glad to be able to do it here um, in my backyard, which is, which is Washington, D.C. This is really a three-part series, but this first part is so, so important. And I think that you all are going to get so much out of this if we can just engage enjoy i need to just kind of open up your hearts and your minds for the next 60 minutes so that we can get as much information um, as possible so we're going to just start giving you just a little bit of background about me so i'm going to share my screen here okay so um who we are so we have a couple of different companies that we um that we oversee uh, the first company that some of you may have or may not have heard of is called Yay Me. Yay Me is our nonprofit. It's a 501c3 um, that was founded here in Washington, D.C. in 2009. At Yay Me, we work with about 2,500 individuals every year. Uh, so we work with as young as five years old all the way up. Um, so we call it kind of cradle to grave services. So we work with senior citizens as well. We focus a lot on returning citizens. Um, teenage boys and girls, individuals coming from the, um, uh, that, that have some type of involvement with the court system. We do a lot of things with them. We run after school programs. We have mentoring programs. Um, and we do a lot of stuff around behavior modification, character development, educational enrichment, workforce development, and entrepreneurship, which is what we're kind of doing here. The other logo you see is called Blueprint Development Consultants. Now, this is our for-profit. Um, and those who continue this relationship with us, you'll know some of the reasons why we have a nonprofit and a for-profit. Because uh, we like to know everything about business and we want to give you all the information that you want to know about business. So the for-profit was really, really important. Because what we realized around about 2015 is we had some pretty... Uh, amazing programs, if I could say so, right? And we were turning out some pretty amazing individuals. Uh, but what happened was a lot of these individuals had so many burdens, right? The um, single mother who was home for the last five years who had this big gap on her resume. Um, the gentleman who did, you know, five, 10, 15, sometimes 20 years incarcerated and had this big gap on his resume. Or just the individual who just did not really take things as serious as they wanted to when they left high school and they had that gap on their resume um, or just did not have any resume at all. But they had this amazing talent. A lot of them had integrity, discipline. They were ready, right? Um, especially like that mother, that single mother whose kids every day, they were at school on time, right? They were fed. They were, their, their, their homework was always done. Like she had management skills better than almost any manager that you can think of. Amazing skills. But how do you put that on a resume, right? Or the young man who may have did five or 10 years incarcerated, but he's come home as a man now. He understands what responsibility looks like. And if you put him in any job in America, he will be your number one employee. But you would not hire him just because of his background. So we wanted to find a way to be able to create systems and places for these individuals. So what we did is with Blueprint, we were able to get into the mental health space. 
We were able to create our own uh, security company. We were able to, uh, to create our own construction company. We learned a little bit about the CBE, which I'm sure you guys have probably heard a little bit about. Um, we were able to work with some other states and to create some things. Um, we did some alternative security companies. Um, and we just, uh, we, we did a, 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 um, a, an entertainment company. So we had all of these different things. We even opened a restaurant, right? Um, we got into the franchise business. So we did all of these things under Blueprint, but the main reason, of course, it was to make, make money, right? So that we can be able to fund money back to Yay Me and do things in the community. But the main reason, honestly, was because we wanted to have an opportunity for individuals who really deserve the opportunity. So we created that opportunity. The other logo, which I made the biggest logo, is the honorary Dr. Majid. Now, even though that is my name, I have turned, or my team, our team, right? We've turned that into the brand, okay? So when I'm going to other states and even other countries all across the world and being able to speak to individuals just like you all, I go under the brand of the Honorary Dr. Majid. Now, that brand means a lot to me. Um, I honestly believe that there are two things that you have. Well, one thing that you have, when you're born and when you die, and that's your name. And that name means so much. And all of you all are a brand. And that's really what we're going to be talking about today. Um, and when I realized how important that brand was, I realized that that brand does not, you, you can't take off, right? That brand doesn't go on vacation. Um, that brand doesn't do anything but establish itself as a brand until you feel super duper confident. So a brand is something that you work on eight days a week, 25 hours a day. And once you establish that brand, then that brand can take you places that you could never imagine. And this journey has been amazing. Um, there was a documentary that um, just came out talking about um, the Dr. Majid brand and what we are doing um, and what we've done even right here in Washington, D.C., but now even just traveling. And I want to be able to share that with you all. I'll even share the link to the video so that you all can see that, the documentary. I think it's especially if you're from the D.C., Maryland, Virginia area, um, I think you'll be inspired to kind of see what we've been able to do. And you're going to hear me a lot say we, right? And you're going to hear very, very little eyes um, because we have a team. And the team is amazing, and the team makes sure that this brand is successful and that it will last a lot longer than I will. Um, so just excited to be here. So, 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 so excited to be here. And then I'm super excited to figure out who we have today. So that's me. Now I want to hear from you guys. Uh, so if you could just take yourself off um, of mute one by one and just tell me your name and this is our first exercise for today i want to know what business that you are either pitching or that you have or idea it doesn't have to be a business i know some people only have an idea which is amazing because most of the things that i'm talking about started as an idea so let me hear your name your business or your idea Who's going to go first? Hello. Can you hear me? I can. Hi, my name is Balin Abdul Qadir, and I am the owner of the Balin Network, which stands for Build, Engage, Lead, and Establish Networks. And my focus is to basically deep dive into training and development and work my way on a global spectrum for employment opportunities by connecting different resources together to help people gain experience that don't have that opportunity to do so. Like you mentioned earlier, like that stay at home mom or that individual that was incarcerated that didn't get a chance to actually get that experience that they deserve. I was looking into tapping into the apprenticeship pipeline so people can have that experience and also focus on another goal of helping startups because as a new startup, it can be challenging at times, but having that understanding from doing so and going through this experience, I want to help others. So by opening that pathway of helping those that are starting up, provide my services for them so that they can start up at a good pace and don't feel alone because it is fun. It is challenging, but it, it also helps to get help as well. Awesome. Awesome. So tell me, would you say that your business started as a passion? Is it a calling or just a way to increase your funds? 
would say a little bit of all um, because <laughs> the idea in itself is bigger than this, but this is something that one will help increase funds that will drive the gears to expand the business. This is just one arm of the Baylor network. I love it. And let me tell you, so and, and, and the name of the company again is called the Baylor network network. Yes, my first name is Baylin, so I turned it into an acronym. I'm looking forward into um, having a DBA as well for the other arms, but um, through this program, I've learned a lot and I still have to learn more, but I wanted to have other um, like DBAs that will be affiliated with my name. I'm sorry. Y'all. Yes, yes. This is this is amazing. I am so glad to, to meet you. This is one of the main functions of Blueprint. Uh, what we've done um, over the, since really since 2018, to be honest with you, we, we started about 2015, but in 2018 is when we really, really kicked off. Um, and, you know, we have just been blessed ever since and really getting in and understanding individuals and the mistakes that they make in business. And because we've learned from so many mistakes from yay me to other ventures that we've had. And that's really what we do. So I'm looking forward to working with you um, after today and showing you what we do with Blueprint and showing you um, what we're doing when it comes to DBAs and, and how many other companies that we actually work with. We've helped over 17 companies here in the, uh, in the District of Columbia. And all 17 of those companies are now, you know, averaging, you know, over a million dollars every year. But we've also helped over 90 individuals to start their companies up. So we're really passionate about that. But it is a calling, and it's also a way to increase our funds. So pleasure, 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 Queen. I'm hoping at some point you'll be able to turn on your camera and 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 and, and be able to come become a part of our community here. I like to see who I'm talking with. Okay, who's next? I can go. Um, thank you so much for your time, Dr. Majee. Thank you so much to Kate and the team over at DSLBD. My name is Trezel Regis, and I am the proud owner of Regis Consulting, which is my for-profit. I also have a nonprofit arm, which is called the Poverty X Project. The X stands for the eradication of poverty, because I feel like there are a lot of projects and programs that are currently managing poverty instead of trying to actually get rid of it. Um, and so that's just a little bit about um, kind of what drives me or what gets me up every day. But our mission is really to manage programs and projects that are already in existence. And the point of that is to provide employment and entrepreneurial trainings to aid in the reduction of unemployment and underemployment. So uh, I think for me, it's a passion, it's a calling, it's a way to increase funds because there's no reason we should be in any ward in the District of Columbia and not able to make ends meet or have food on the table in abundance. Yes, yes. And you've, the first company, the for-profit, was called what again? I'm sorry. Yeah, it's my last name, Regus Consulting. Consulting, okay. Mm -hmm. And, and Regus Consulting, uh, Basically, it, it works with po Poverty X, or how does that how does that kind of work? Exactly, yeah. So it it works in conjunction with. So if we're usually if we're applying for uh, most grants, um, and when we're dealing with foundations who fund the work that we're doing, we're going to go through the nonprofit arm. When we're dealing with government agencies and um, large corporations, we usually go through our for profit arm. But usually, I tie them together and kind of pull in the team from both ends for any of the work that we do because honestly, they both have the same goal and mission in mind. So. All right, all right, okay, DSLBD, y'all bringing it today. I, I, I thought this was just going to be me giving a WebEx. This seems like an interview right now. I love it. <laughs> I'm loving it. Thank you so much for sharing that. Yeah. Who else? Do we have anybody else on? Who's next? So Delorence did mention in the chat that um, he's he's juggling a couple things, so may or may not be able to come off of you. Okay. All right. Well, this was still amazing. I, I mean, you all have some amazing talent. Um, you know, 
our admin team is on and I'm sure that they're probably saying the same thing. Like this is definitely turning into a recruitment fair at this point. So we're going to move on to the next icebreaker. All right. So you all talked about your business. Um, these were some amazing businesses. I'm hoping that the brother can share in a second. So one of the things that is really important when we're talking about business is multiple streams of income. And you all have already kind of talked about this. So as I said, uh, we had the opportunity um, to get into the food industry. Um, and we actually opened up uh, a restaurant. And within that restaurant, you know, we just kind of came in. I didn't have a whole bunch of knowledge. For anyone who's ever opened up a restaurant before, it is definitely one of those businesses that if you don't know what you're talking about, you don't know what you're doing, it is not the best business, right? It is. It has to have passion behind it. Um, I think people that open up a restaurant just for money, it's pretty hard for, for you to be successful. But if that is your passion, I mean, if that is your reason, then you really need to have what we call multiple streams of income. And I'm sure you've heard that word millions of times. So I wanna just start with the two young ladies who shared, and if the gentleman, if you have the opportunity to come in, just let us know, um, take your phone off mute and let us know because we wanna in involve you as well with this. So what we wanna do with this last icebreaker is I want you to think about your company. And I know um, the sister Poverty X and Regus Consulting, and if I messed that up, I apologize. I know you have two, but I want you to pick one, um, both of you all, pick your company, and I want you to tell me at least seven ways, seven streams of income that you can have for your company. And don't worry about it if you can't get to all seven, but let's try our best um, to get there. So I'm just gonna give just a couple of minutes to give you an opportunity to start to jot those down. If you wanna put them in the chat, if you don't have a piece of paper, that's fine as well. And we're just gonna kind of go th and run through those. Okay, so just drop them in the chat. I'm ready. I can. Um, I have six right now. So <laughs> this is an amazing team. I'm just. I'm excited right now. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, I was going to give the example, but she doesn't even need the example right now. Um, <laughs> uh, go ahead. If you want to start, we can. We can go ahead and start it on. Okay. Uh, so uh, for me, I think so far this is how we've uh, made money. So through trainings, obviously, that's our like uh, bread and butter. Um, but we've also um, had the opportunity to help with capacity building through kind of um, building out apprenticeship uh, programs. Um, well, in apprenticeship program, um, we, we would like to do more. Um, we were asked to do to partner with a, a company to do a couple courses. So we're going to be able to make some money. Um, they said from the courses that are posted on their YouTube channel. Then we um, also get consulting fees. Um, we do event planning uh, for some of our clients. For example, one um, project that we had, it was a training over six weeks, but in the middle of that, they asked us to do a trunk party event. So they threw us an additional $5,000 to do that one event on that one day. Um, so we were able to do that. Uh, and then through strategic planning and um, other means of capacity building, like helping actually uh, find uh, like um, people that they would like to recruit. I think that is seven actually. Yeah, so that's seven ways that we've made money that we consider to be different. I don't know if that counts. Uh, any feedback is appreciated. No, that that's amazing. Uh, that is amazing. And the fact that you had those seven so so fast, I, I actually got five of them. So I, I, I missed two. But that is um, amazing, like beyond amazing. It is really important that we understand that um, one business can have so many different streams of income. Uh, and, um, I don't know, sister Baleen, are, are, are you, are you ready? Or you, or you need a couple more seconds? Right. I am ready. But I had, <laughs> go ahead. Let's so go. You can see me. I don't know if you can see me. Can you see? Yes, I can. Hello. How are you? <laughs> yes, so now yes. when I walk past you on the street, I can say, I know yes. who this queen is. Okay. Hi, I'm ready. Man. 
Um, so I just jotted these down really quick. So on top of the um, consulting resources, I have writing a book, which is something that an individual within DSLBD guided me to do. So I would love to do that. And that is going to be surrounded in my life journey of all that I've been through. Really don't have enough time to talk about it right now, but it is impactful. I also, um, tapped into the federal life insurance space to have that as a way to make extra money. Um, so that is something I, I actually like tapped into. I'm in the process of training for that. And then I plan to get paid through speaking public engagements. So next week I'm diving into a marketing opportunity to challenge one of my biggest fears, which is public speaking, but to actually get better at it in just embrace it and ride the wave, right? So um, that is something I do want to get paid from, but again, someone within the SLVD guided me to do that. I also want to tap into the real estate, um, which I actually did a quantum leap, Miss Kate, over the weekend. <laughs> I actually put some money into a mortgage investment um, within Airbnb. So that's another way to make money, which would be like mainly around like the holidays, but it's really one of those, I don't have to be there. I don't have to decorate it. It's just basically selling the service, making a post, somebody books it, and then I'm just paying a maintenance fee. That's it. Um, and it legally. <laughs> um, and then I tapped into that. Another one is project coordinating, which I also do some event planning for some individuals. And um, that's throughout the year. Another way is through educational IT programs. So I help with coordinating IT programs for individuals as well. Um, and then coaching slash mentoring. So those are my ways of income. This is amazing. You guys got it. Like, like you really, really got it. Like that, that is, that is truly amazing. Um, your breakdowns, the way that they all. So this is the thing, right? It's amazing. Now yours are, are, are so broad. Like I can go to a couple of them and just like, it's amazing. Like with real estate, you know, some people don't really know a lot about real estate um, and it can scare people, but I can see how all of these things can intersect. Uh, one thing that you said was writing a book. And this is really for everyone who's tuned in. Um, I was taught some years back that everyone has at least three books inside of them, right? Um, it's usually your story, right? And it's, uh, sometimes it's the story of someone who's really close to you or who, who you've had contact with. And then it's also a, um, a fiction story, right? One that you may want to make up. Um, so everyone has the opportunity to have three books. And I'm a person who's probably been working on his book for like 10 years, 15 years, and still I'm like three pages in, right? Because I'm just a kind of a perfectionist when it comes to that. Uh, the only reason I was able to do the documentary because someone literally followed me around every day for almost two years, right? Um, but that's amazing that you have that book. And sister, I can only imagine um, what type of story that you have because we all have these powerful stories. Uh, so when I see you all, just to start a business alone, you know, um, that's why I asked you, is it a passion? You know, because I, I like to fund passion, right? I like to support passion. Um, but I also understand that, you know, there's so many other things that come with the business. And, um, you know, that story of being able to do that. Right now, Blueprint, I believe the success of Blueprint is because of the mistakes that we've made. Um, most of the curriculums, which is one of the main things that we do under Yay Me, which is our nonprofit, all of those curriculums that we created all came from mistakes that were made. Um, and that's where that came out of. And so that's a book. So that was just like really powerful to hear you say that. But I believe both of you all really understand what it's going to take to be successful in business because you cannot have one stream of income in business. You have to have multiple streams of income. And I always say seven streams. But hey, if you got two, that's better than better than one. And if you got eight, you're doing better than me. So just continue to go and go and go and look at each one of those streams and try your best to see if they intersect, right? So, you know, I know you probably hear people say, oh, you, you all over the place. You know, I always was told that I had business ADHD, right? So they're like, hold up, like, what do you do? You're like, okay, you have a nonprofit and you, okay, you're doing a restaurant, you got a studio, you're doing clean, like, what do you do? So Blueprint gave me the opportunity to really be able to 
have all of these different opportunities, but they all intersect. So most of the companies that we are associated with or under the umbrella of Blueprint, a lot of times there are other individuals' passion, right? But they just needed the system that we created so that they weren't all over the place. So they're doing most of the work, the heavy lifting, but it all comes under Blueprint. So it all intersects to that place, right? So we have all of these different streams of income, but we also make sure that we have amazing people who are doing these things. So I say that because I don't want you all to burn yourselves out trying to do so many different things. When you have six, seven different streams of income, try your best to make sure they all intersect in the same lane, that they all kind of feed back to you, if that makes sense, okay? Now we're gonna be moving right along. This is a, this, you guys, I'm, I'm really excited right now. Now, remember it's called funding the poverty mindset. So I know we, uh, I'm sure some of us have seen some of these characters up here before, right? So just in case you don't know, if you don't have any little, little people running around the house or nieces or nephews, we have Batman, we have Iron Man, and we have Spider-Man. Now, one thing that I've really been studying um, really over the last, now it's almost been 10 years, as I study millionaires, you know, I study a couple of billionaires, I study successful people. It is really important that we do that if you want to be successful, right? You have to study these individuals. And one thing that I learned from them was how we have been taught, we've been taught since birth to hate money, to feel bad about money, we have been taught to be broke, right? We've been taught to have a poverty mindset, right? Um, and one of my goals right now is for individuals like yourself and me, because we're all climbing this mountain together, as I'm trying to get rid of that poverty mindset. I really just want to get rid of it, right? So the apathetic mindset, the poverty mindset, my goal is just to get rid of it. The first thing I want you guys to realize is everything that we've been taught from school, from television, unfortunately from our parents, right, um, has been how to have this poverty mindset. And this is no slight to you guys' parents. This is no slight to my parents. This is no slight to anyone. This is just the way that things have been. So when I look at that first superhero, uh, Batman, when you think of Batman, what do you think of? Just throw it out there. No wrong answers. Strong, brave. Okay, strong, brave. What does Batman do when he doesn't have his cape on? Anybody know? You ever heard of Bruce Wayne? Okay, so Bruce Wayne is Batman, okay? Batman is probably the well actually to me i think he's the only superhero that i can think of that doesn't have an actual superpower his superpower is actually that he's rich okay so he's able to do all of these amazing things as batman because he's has this inheritance from his father but when you look at bruce wayne what, what we're taught about bruce wayne that batman is that bruce wayne is this playboy he wastes money he throw he throws money around you know, he has multiple women. He's doing all of these crazy things. So when we look at him, we see this billionaire playboy, right? Um, so when you think about, okay, he's a superhero, but when it comes to the money side of it, he's not known as a, a good person because people don't know he's Batman. That's why he wears the mask, right? So we're already taught that, you know what? This guy does not respect money. He throws it around. He's a playboy billionaire. Now, the next person that you see is Iron Man. Has anyone heard of Iron Man before? Okay. Does anybody know who Iron Man is when he doesn't have his mask on? <laughs> okay. He's Tony Starks. Okay. Tony Starks, who's probably in the, 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 the uh, comic world, one of the richest superheroes that we have, right? He's very innovative. He's created so many things. I mean, he's I mean, he's done some amazing stuff. His father was um, also a creator of so many amazing things. And his father did a lot of things with like the government when it came to the d defense department. So that's how he kind of really became Iron Man. But when he's Tony Starks, he is the most arrogant, self-centered individual that you could ever meet in the world. Not a good person. Um, 
definitely just giving you just like, I, I would not date you. I, it's no way in the world. I don't even want to be in the same room with you, right? So uh, once again, it's telling us that individuals who have money are not good people. Now, the third person is Spider-Man. Everybody heard of Spider-Man, right? Okay. Um, do you know who Spider-Man is when he has when he doesn't has, have his mask on? I'm going 0 for 3 here. We, we, we want us to have to, we want to get some little people running around the house, right? He's, he's the kid from New York City. Yes, 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 he is. He is Peter Parker, okay? And Peter Parker is this young boy in high school. Um, and he actually is, uh, he lives with his aunt and his uncle. Um, his parents, um, I believe, I, I believe they were killed. I'm not sure hundred percent, but I believe they were killed. But anyway, his uncle who he's staying with now was actually murdered as well. But Peter Parker is and his aunt May, who's the aunt that he lives with now. They're really poor. Um, they live in an apartment, you know, they're struggling. He's not able to do a lot of different things, but he is Spider-Man. So once again, it just shows you how these individuals who have been a part of our childhood, they've showed us if you have too much money, you're a bad person, right? Um, but you, it's okay to have no money. It's okay to be broke. It's okay to not want all of these things because that's kind of how Spider-Man is. He doesn't want to use his powers to get money or to do all these crazy things, right? He just wants to just help, 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 and that's fine. But we want to change that, right? I want you all to start thinking about money as this tool, right? Because that's all it is, right? I want you to also think about success as this tool, because if we start to think about it like that, right, money being a tool and success being a tool, you will then start to understand how to use it, you know? And a lot of times we are not taught the power of tools and how they should be used, right? And I don't want to get off on the rabbit trail, but that's also why people do things. Because like I can tell you, a hammer, which is a hammer, right, a regular hammer, if I gave that to you, all depending on how you look at that hammer, what type of tool you want it to be? It could be a weapon or you could build a house. It all depends on how you use it. And that's what we like to talk about here um, is how you use the tool of money, success, right? Even DSLBD. DSLBD is a tool. Some people use that tool to further themselves, right? Some people use that tool just because they, hey, I just want to have something to do. Some people don't use it correctly. If you use a tool correctly, you will be surprised at what can happen. So we want to start changing the way that you all think about money, change the way you think about success. It is something that you can have. Um, I remember one of my friends, he is, I mean, this guy is, is, is a, a billionaire, right? Um, he's, but he's an amazing guy inside and out. And I remember one time he said, um, he said, he said, Doc, you know, you're exactly where you want to be. And, we, <laughs> and I'm looking at him and I'm like, uh, no, not exactly. I wouldn't mind being where you are right now. He said, no, you're exactly where you want to be. In other words, what he was saying was the tool that I was not using was this tool called time. Because he was saying, if I use my time the same way that he used his time, because he did not come from money. He's a self-made billionaire, right? Um, and he just wanted to tell me, like, the way that you use this tool called time is going to determine if you want to be where I'm at, right? So right now, where you're sitting at is exactly where you want to be. And I started to realize, like, oh, okay. And he also told me, like, don't be scared when you hear, when someone comes up right now and say, hey, you know, I want to take your company, and I'm thinking that your company is about to turn into, like, a billion-dollar company, Right? And you sit there and you say, ah, oh, Poverty X, I don't think he can really become a billion dollar company. But guess what? He who says he can and he who says he can't are both correct. And that's exactly what your company will be. Because we are all exactly where we want to be, right? If we utilize our time, if we have integrity, if we have discipline, you can be anywhere that you want to be. And that's the important thing when you start thinking about money. When you start thinking about all of the things that we've learned in our lifetime, some of those things we have to get rid of, right? Some of those things we're going to have to separate ourselves for so that you could be as, su as successful as I know you're going to be. So that was why it was important that you all start to look back at your lives. I'm like, okay, what was I taught about money? What was I taught about success, right? Because once you start to eliminate some of those things that have been holding you down, 
you and your company is going to just go. Um, and that's when, when this next piece, which is so, so important. So let's think about business, right? There are actually only three types of business, right? Does anybody know what those three types of businesses are? Let's take a guess. No wrong answers. So this is why I like to be in front of you all, because I'll be pointing you guys out right now. Help me out. Three different types of businesses. Okay, I say for profit. I see the, see someone is putting stuff in the chat. Let me make sure that I'm looking at this chat here. Okay. He said one said for profit. Keep it going, Brother Jenkins. And I throw some out there. Okay. Okay. That's good. Go ahead, throw a couple out there. Would it be like out of if I were to just say guys, one that makes you more money? One that helps you with your health and one that can help you, um, I guess, with your relationships, with your well-being, but not health. But those are just the three when I'm thinking about money. That is fine. And that is not the wrong answer for you or Brother Lloyd or the sister. But let me tell you right now, there are only three types of businesses. One is going out of business. The other one is a stagnant business. And the third one is a thriving business. That's it. So let's think about, uh, does anybody remember Blockbusters? I feel like I might be aging myself right now. Okay. So Blockbusters was this amazing business. You can go in, you can pick your DVD player, um, and you take it home and you watch it and you have to bring it back. And it was amazing because you got to talk to people and all these type of things. But then something came out called Redbox. And Redbox actually went to Blockbusters and said, we got this amazing idea and we want you guys to, you know, to partner with us, da 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 And they said, ah, that'll never, never happen. No one's going to Safeway to get a, a DVD. That's not going to happen. But it did happen. And soon after you saw store closing, Blockbusters was gone, right? Um, and I want you all from this day forth to think of yourselves as the business, right? So it is not your network, right? It is not your consulting company, it is you. So when you see Dr. Majid, that is my business at this point. And I want you to ask yourself, are you going out of business, right? Are you a stagnant business or are you a thriving business? Now, going out of business, unfortunately, a lot of the brothers and sisters that I work with, or work for, should I say, when they're going out of business, some of them are over at the jail, right? When they're going out of business, some of them have gotten hooked on all different types of drugs and alcohol and things like that, and they're really going out of business. Um, some of them uh, have not put the work in that's necessary. Um, some of them did not hear the words that we told them. We said, you are exactly where you want to be and made sure that they surrounded themselves with individuals who are going to help them like DSLBD. And sh as soon as they start, they start going out of, going out of business. Um, and we don't want that for you all. So you have to ask yourself, am I going out of business? Or this is the one that, oh my goodness. So I'm going to say this. This is what I call a stagnant business. You know, you have that corner store around some of our communities. You go into that corner store and, you know, everything looks the same. They didn't change the awning in 20 years. The floor has chipped tile, right? They're not pretty much doing anything. They might make $1,000 a day or $1,000 a week, and they've probably been making that $1,000 for the last 10, 15, 20 years. There's nothing wrong with that. That's fine, right? But that's just a business that's just going to pretty much be there I'm not going to make too much change, too many changes. It probably is not going to make a huge, huge impact on the world. At the bottom there, you see these individuals coming from, that's a metro station. Now, why do I have that there? I used to have um, a job at the, uh, the Navy Yard. And it was the last time that I worked for anyone. But I remember my office, I had a perfect view from the subway station to the Starbucks. And every day I would see a sea of individuals and they would go from the start, from the subway station to the Starbucks. I mean, almost just looked like 
I mean, it was like a C every day. I mean, like clockwork. And I remember looking and just saying, wow, I don't know if I really want to trade my time for money um, the way these individuals are doing every day for the next 40, 50 years. Now, let me be very clear. That is an honorable thing to do. If you are not hurting society, if you're going to work every day, if you're doing what you have to do, I have no issues with it. Me personally, I was born to be an entrepreneur, right? So for me, that did something to my spirit. And it just told me like, I cannot sit here and work for anyone for the rest of my life. I can't trade time for money, right? I also did not want to just be a stagnant type of person. Remember, we're not talking about your business right now. This session is more about you than it is about your business. Because I honestly believe that when you treat yourself like a business, everything that you touch will turn to gold. Right. And I'm telling you that I can I can honestly sit here and say that that I know that that's true. So when I looked at that, I realized like I did not want to be that person. Right. Get up every day, catch the subway, go to Starbucks, go to work, go home. So I didn't want to be that stagnant individual. Now, take me to the, the next slide. At the bottom half right there, you see that's LeBron James. So, ladies, I'm not going to ask you, do you know who LeBron James is? Because you didn't know who Spider-Man was and you didn't know who Batman was. So, it just messed me all up. Come on, Kate. You know, I need some help here. Um, but LeBron James, if you don't know, is one of the more successful basketball players. He is he, Savannah. Yeah, I know Savannah James. I love it. I love it. Um, but um, he's not only one of the more successful basketball players ever, but he's one of the first basketball players that made a billion dollars while playing. He's still, he's still playing in the league. He's also one of the first basketball players who will probably have an opportunity to buy an actual team. Um, there's only been one, Michael Jordan, and he's probably going to be the second one, um, God willing. And the top right hand side um, or left side, I'm not sure how it looks on you guys' computer, but you can see um, Amazon, right? And Amazon is by far one of the largest companies. Will we say Amazon is a thriving business? Anybody agree? Anybody agree with that? Amazon's a, a thriving business. Okay. So I'm going to ask you guys a question. Give me an example of another thriving business. Walmart. Walmart, yes. Another example. Badia, I never heard of that one. What is that? Yeah, uh, tell uh, me hey, hey, that. it's Lloyd. I finally found the class. Back. In, in video, they do the... Um, GPUs with AI now that's big. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, I can. I can. Yep. Yep. So, uh, they, uh, NVIDIA makes GPUs for gaming, but they major in GPUs for businesses. It's these big towers of, uh, in data systems that are actual, like, like, a, um, like it's a stack of GPUs. So, um, NVIDIA, Microsoft, Google, um, uh, Eli, Eli, uh, help some people, Eli, Eli, um, can't think of that last name, but yeah, that, just, just to give you a few. Okay. Thank you so much. I'm glad you, you're able to join us here, brother. Glad to hear your voice there. I was, um, I was also going to say <laughs> for thriving businesses, just look around your house or like your everyday use. Right. So I have a iPhone right here. So Apple. Um, I have a Dell computer in front of me, the Samsung TV right here. My phone service is Verizon. Outside, I drive a Mercedes. So, I mean, it's everything that you see, a lot of what you see regularly, like, is that's those, you know, household brands that have been around forever. Mr. Ragus, have you seen my presentation before? Oh. <laughs> This is amazing. So one of the things that we, uh, well, this actually was, was coming up and what we talk about is, so we talk about being a CEO and I say, Hey, how many CEOs have you met? Right. But you already stole my presentation. I, I think I want like 10% of that. Okay. But that is exactly where I was going with it. Right. If you look around from the cereal that you eat, right. The brands that you have in your refrigerator, your cell phone, your car, your computer, your television, 
You are doing business with billionaires and CEOs every day. And a lot of these are thriving because you have supported them. So I want you to really ask yourself, who are you when it comes to a brand and a business? Are you going out of business? Are you stagnant or are you thriving? And that's really important that you ask yourself that and um, you figure out where you want to be. Because if you feel like you're going out of business, there are some things that you can do right now to correct that, to make sure that you don't have to go out of business. So that was amazing. I thank you all for sharing that. Now, moving right along. Now, you guys see these two different rooms. So what we like to talk about is the devil is in the details. And this is how we really start to wrap up this session and you're really thinking about that. So the room to the left, as you can see, we got clothes everywhere. Um, you know, I mean, the drawers are open. It just looks like what is going on in there, right? To the right, we have a room where if I needed to say, okay, where was some paper? I think I can find it. If I need to find my cell phone, I think I can find it, right? And if you had these two different rooms, I'm sure most of you would probably feel like you could function better in the room to the right, right? But unfortunately, some of us are functioning in our lives, because remember, you are your own CEO, you are your own brand, some of our brands and some of our lives are looking a little bit to the left, okay? What we realized is that, especially when we call this the devil in the details, right? The devil's in the details. Because for you to become a successful brand, it must start with you. And it must start with the small things. And I realized this just from coming home and taking off your ring or your watch and putting it in a specific place, taking off, taking out your cell phone, putting it on the charger in a specific place, you know, going into your kitchen and making sure like the cups were clean and put where they're supposed to be. And then when you wake up in the morning, you can say, hey, I know exactly where my t-shirts are. I know where my suit is. I know where my watch is. I know where my ring is. It just shows that every little thing in your life is put in order. Now, a lot of people would say, well, does that really matter? Number one, because what you're trying to do is you're trying to be successful, you have to understand that there, those are the little things that throw everything off. It's not the big things a lot of times, right? Usually we focus on the big things. We know for a fact we have to open up the store, right? You know for a fact that you have to submit that contract, right? You, so usually you say, you know what, that's on my checklist. And I'm going to do that. But you never thought like, uh, I needed to make my bed before I left. Now, why would you leave out sometimes, right? And I hope I'm not offending anybody because this is a lesson that I learned personally. Sometimes you say, hey, if I left out in the morning time and I didn't make my bed, right? Why would be, what would be the main reason why I didn't do it? Probably because you're rushing, right? Or you didn't feel like it was very important. However, when you get to your next place, then you realize, okay, I'm rushing to get into this meeting, or I'm rushing to do this proposal, or I'm rushing to do this. If you go back just to your room, then you can say, you know what? I already started off my day completely wrong. As I told you all, we had the opportunity to be able to be a part of a franchise, right? Now, franchises are amazing to be a part of. And God willing, one of you all one day will have the opportunity to be a part of a franchise. But let me tell you what we learned more than anything. The franchise helped me as a person more than anything. It helped me to be able to focus a lot more. It helped me to realize that the devil really was in the details. So one day I'm going in and I'm talking to my partner and we saw uh, the franchise is like an ice cream type of place. And when we went in one time, I saw there were like sprinkles, you know, the sprinkles that you would put on ice cream. I went to the counter and I saw these sprinkles on the counter. And I kind of made a big deal about it to my partner and just kind of explain, explaining to her and the manager why this was so unacceptable. 
And they just didn't understand, like, why was he so worried about sprinkles on the counter? Let me tell you why. Because the devil is in the details. The sprinkles on the counter, number one, let's just say a couple of ants found out about that sprinkle. Has anybody ever had ants in their house? There's a line of ants. You don't know where they came from. Those soldiers are in there. They're going to be in there. So if you have uh, uh, ants in your establishment, now you have to do what? You would have to get someone to come in to exterminate those ants, right? We also have a system that shows the scoop that you were supposed to get the sprinkles with. In that scoop was an actual spoon, not the actual scoop. So you were giving away too many sprinkles. Because it was too many sprinkles, they were falling off. They were coming onto the counter, which means that the system that was created, which was go to the window, get the customer, make sure everything is in place. If they wanted sprinkles, you put the sprinkles from the actual cup that you give the sprinkles to, it falls on the ice cream perfect. You give that to them, you wipe the counter down every time. What I did was, before I went to the, to the manager, I went, sat in my car for a second, because I wanted to see what other things were happening. They were not opening the store correctly. When someone was coming in and out, we had a system. They weren't doing that. I came in, I saw the way that they were actually scooping out these sprinkles. That wasn't done right. I saw the way that they were actually giving individuals their ice cream. There's a certain amount of time that you're supposed to have the cup under the ice cream maker. They weren't doing that. So what I wanted to show them was that the devil was in the details because when you stop doing those really, really small things, those really, really small things, you will see how it actually impacts everything else that you're doing. So from that little sprinkle, you just invested money that you should not be investing and someone coming in, exterminating your store, when you are not locking up or opening up the door correctly, you're putting yourself in jeopardy for someone to be able to come in, rob your establishment, um, or don't understand what's going on. When you are putting your cup under the ice cream maker for even two seconds longer than it should be, you're giving someone way more ice cream, which at the, on the back end means that you're, you're gonna be using a lot more of your materials. So those small little things from that little sprinkle right? It hurt the entire establishment. For us, me just saying, I'm not going to make my bed this morning. I'm going to rush out because I'm rushing, which means I probably didn't get proper sleep, which means I probably got up a little bit too late. So now my whole day is thrown off because the devil is in the details. So ladies and gentlemen, if nothing else for today, what I need for you all to understand is number one, you are your brand. You are your best business card. People will invest in your company eventually, but as we are starting and getting things moving, people are investing in you. So please ask yourself, am I going out of business? Am I thriving? Am I stagnant? Start working on that. Start working on your brand. Then ask yourself, if the devil is in the details, have I been doing the little things? Because when you see that you're not getting the contracts, when you see that you, you know, have to close your business, when you're seeing that you're not able to stay up because you're not in good standing, right? Or something's going on with your taxes or something is going on or someone that's in your, uh, in your circle. Usually these things happen because we did not focus on the details. And for us to be successful, we must Focus on the details. So, in conclusion, because like I said, this is part one. I'm hoping that as we have part two and part three, that you all will be a part of it. Um, I wanted to add in here this our social media handles. This is the best way to get in contact with us, as well as our email. Um, this was amazing. I want to end on this very last thing. There is a cheat code to success. And I want you all to write this cheat code down. I want you to put it somewhere that you will always see it. The cheat code to success is to not cheat yourself. Do not cheat yourself. Okay? That is the cheat code. Right? There is it's, it's no magic wand or anything else. It's literally do not cheat yourself. And that is the cheat code to success. So this was amazing. Um, I and really enjoyed myself with you all. 
You are so talented. Um, I'm looking forward to partnering with you all on some things moving forward. I want to tell you all, like, why you're with DSLBD, it is one of the best kept secrets that's not a secret <laughs> in the District of Columbia. But if you knew how many people don't take it serious, if you know how many people are trying to look for a cheat code and there's no cheat code, right? You know how many people don't understand that they are their brand, that they are the CEO, and their the destiny and everything that they have, it depends on how you spend your time. There's so many of them. I do not want you all to be those individuals. So thank you so much on behalf of Yay Me and the Dr. Majeed brand and Blueprint Development. This was amazing. Thank you, DSLBD, for giving us this opportunity to share with these beautiful individuals. And I'm looking forward to some great things. So does anyone have any questions, any comments, any concerns? <clears throat> None at all? All right. I don't have any questions just yet, but I will be in touch with you. Amazing. Thank Actually, you so I do have a question that just came up. I went to your um to your Instagram page. I see you guys are looking for a credible um mentor. I have this guy in mind, but um, is this through the Credible Messengers program? That's what I'm. My question is: or what's Credible Mentor? That's why I'm asking. It's 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 a, uh, very similar to Credible Mentor um, uh, Messengers, but Credible Mentors is under Yay Me, so that's our version of yes. Okay. Okay. Got it. Okay, thank you. Absolutely. So thank you all so much. And uh, Kate, thank you question. so much. You are amazing. Brother Lloyd, did you say something? Just one more question. Your uh, seven streams of income, do they all stay in your business or does it matter? Or does it not matter? No, it does not matter. Um, it's just that when we're starting off, because I had uh, business ADHD, I realized that as long as they all came and intersected together, it just helped me out a lot better. But no, I would say as many ways that you know to make money um, within your 24 hours that you have, and uh, we get into that a little bit in, in part two um, of how you utilize your time. But yes, utilize your time the best that you possibly can. Yep. So I'm hoping everyone enjoyed the session. Um, Please give us any type of feedback um, at uh, at the Dr. Majid on Instagram. If you're on Instagram, I want to know how we did. We always try to improve. And Kate, thank you so much again. Wonderful. Dr. Majid, thank you so much for sharing with us today. Um, thank you to everyone who was on the session live. And if you are catching this later, um, definitely, um, you know, share all that information about how to reach out. And I just want to say thank you and have a great day, everyone. Thank you, Kate. Yeah. Um, is there any way for you to end the